There you are. Do you like my lion? And here I am. Did you know that kitty cats and lions are related? It's hard to believe, isn't it? Because kitties are so soft and they purr so nice, and yet lions are so fierce looking. I wouldn't want to have a lion sitting on my lap, would you? Lions are actually very beautiful though, aren't they, with their big bushy manes? Maybe that's why they're called the king of the beasts, because their manes make them look very kingly, don't they? You know what? In just a minute, I'm going to tell you a story about a man who had to tangle with a very, very powerful human king, and also with a whole den full of the kings of the beasts. to do. I have so many things planned for you. We'll laugh and we'll play. We'll sing and we'll pray. I'll tell you a story or two. And we'll be friends, you and I. Yes, you and I and Jesus. You know, the Bible is just filled with such interesting, exciting stories. And the story I want to tell you about now is found in the chapter of Daniel, and it's about a man named Daniel. You know, Daniel had been taken as a prisoner to a land called Babylon, and the king there wanted to treat Daniel very well. And so when it came time to eat, he served him the most fancy, richest food that he had. And the food looked very wonderful. But as Daniel looked at it, he knew that it wasn't the best food for his body. And he knew that God had said that in order to be healthy and strong, he shouldn't eat that way. And so he went to the other prisoners, his other friends, and he said, you know, fellows, we shouldn't eat this food because it isn't food that will make us strong and healthy. And God says not to eat that way. And many of them just said, ah. Oh, we don't want to tell the king we won't eat it. Why, if we do that, he'd get angry at us. It doesn't matter. We'll just eat a little bit of it. But finally, three of the fellows said to Daniel, we'll be brave and we'll go with you to talk. And so they went to the overseer who was in charge of them. And they said, you know, sir, we really appreciate the king giving us this wonderful food. But We've learned that God says it isn't the best for us to eat this way because it won't make us strong and healthy. And we were wondering if you could just serve us some simple food like whole grains and vegetables and fruits and water to drink instead of the wine. Well, the man said, I can't do that. Why, the king might even chop my head off if you start looking sick and unhealthy. No, I can't do that. But Daniel and his friends said, please, sir, just try us for 10 days. So finally the overseer said, okay, I'll try you for 10 days, but this better not make a fool out of me. And so during those 10 days, Daniel and his friends did their part too. They ate the good food, they went out exercising, they got lots of rest, and they also prayed that God would especially bless this little test. And the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, verse 15, it says that at the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. The king gave Daniel food one day, the richest in the land. But God said not to eat that way, so Daniel took a stand. Dare to be like Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Daniel asked the overseer to bend the king's own rule. The man said, yes, let's have a test and we'll see who's the fool. 
Daniel and his friends worked out, ate right, and got their rest. In ten days they were strong and smarter than the king's own best. Dare to be like Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. And you know, the years went by, and Daniel, every day, he kept making good choices. And he kept learning to do his work well. And finally, a new king came into power. And he had heard such good reports about Daniel. And as he watched Daniel work, he saw that he was a very dependable person. And so he made Daniel to be put into a very important position. In fact, he was made ruler over many of the other princes in the kingdom. Well. You can imagine that that made them jealous. And they didn't want Daniel to be in charge of them. They had been princes before, and now someone else was in charge of them. And so they started thinking, what can we do to get this guy out of power? But when they would watch him, he was always on time for work. He was always honest. He always did his job clear through right to the beginning. He never shirked his responsibility. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. Finally, they thought of a way they were going to trick the king. And so they went to the king and they flattered him. They said, you know, king, you're so important and so good. You should make a rule that everybody has to pray for you for 30 days and that if they don't, they'll get thrown in the lion's den. And that made the king feel good. So he got out his big fancy ring and he put his stamp down on the rule. And then the messengers went out and started reading the rule in all the marketplaces and all the city corners of the streets. And Daniel heard the rule. And right away, he knew that that rule was meant to trick him. He had a choice to make. Do you think he wanted to be thrown in the lion's den? I wouldn't. He didn't either. He thought about all the times in the past that God had helped him about the time when he had made the good choice about the food and God had been with him and protected him. And he decided to do what God wanted him to do. So the Bible says that he, it says in Daniel, it says that three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had always done before. And it says that he did that in his upstairs room where the window was open wide. So those guys saw it. And they went running to the palace as fast as they could. And they said, oh, king, someone's broken your rule. And the king said, who? And they said, it was Daniel, king. And he just slumped into his chair. He liked Daniel. He didn't want Daniel to have to be thrown into the lion's den. In fact, the Bible says that when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. And he determined to rescue Daniel and he made every effort until sundown to save him. But do you know what? He couldn't think of any way because he had made the rule. He couldn't change the rule. So Daniel got thrown into that den of roaring lions. Not just one lion. It was a whole big den of them. The king didn't sleep that night. He was so worried about his friend Daniel. And the Bible says... That as the first light of dawn came, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. And when he came near the den, he called to Daniel in a worried voice. And he said, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, who you always serve, been able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions, and they haven't hurt me. You can be like Daniel, you can fight the wrong. When you pray to God each day, his power will make you strong. Dare to be like Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Hey kids, if you love all the fun things you get to do with Janice and her friends, you'll flip over this. It's Janice's activity book. 
Loaded with fun, this book teaches scripture through mazes, puzzles, dot-to-dot -dot games, coloring, and more. And the best part is, it's free! Let's take a look inside. The scripture on this page says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, let's circle the pictures that are the same. That's right, you've got the idea. There are many more fun-filled activities in this book just waiting for you. By the way, did I mention it's free? To get your very own copy, have your mom or dad write to Janice's Attic Activity Book, Care of 3ABN, P.O. Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call 1-800-752-3226. Don't wait. Order yours today. Hi, Dr. Neblet. Hello, Janice. We're glad you're here. I'm happy to be here. And he has some interesting things to show us. And are you ready to start? I certainly am. Kimberly, I need a helper. Come on in. Okay. And she's going to show us how to choose between some good foods. You know, if we're going to be strong like Daniel, we need to know how to choose some good mm, foods. That's sure true. I'm going to start off with something to drink. Kimberly, why don't you choose one of these? What would be a favorite of yours? This one, this is a juice. Mm -hmm. Juice is very important because it has lots of minerals and vitamins mm -hmm. that help us to be nice and strong. This one here is a soda. It has in water. We do need water, but it also has a lot of sugar mm -hmm. in it. Sugar. And that's not very good at all. Mm -hmm. Let's try another one for you, Kimberly. Let's see, we all need some cereal to eat. What would be your favorite cereal? This one right here. This is a good cereal. Cereal's really important for us to eat for breakfast, breakfast isn't yes. it? Yes, it certainly is. But this cereal here has a lot of sugar in mm. it. That's the second time we've talked about sugar. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we eat a lot of sugar, we get holes in our teeth, don't mm. we? Get Ouch. cavities. Those hurt. But something else happens, too. Sugar, when we eat a lot of it, it doesn't help us to fight infections. It affects our immune system. Our immune system. Can we say that after you? Absolutely. Our immune system. system. Immune system. Mm -hmm. yes. We know that That's when we eat word. a lot of sugar, our immune system doesn't work very well, and we can't yes. fight infections very well. We get sick a lot. Mm. That's not that, that's good. That's not good. Mm -mm. We want to have a healthy immune system. That's right. Now, let's pick something else over here. Let's see. Let's bring this one closer to Kimberly. Kimberly, would you pick one of your favorite foods in here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know lots of kids like these. This is yummy chocolate. And yummy chocolate has lots of sugar inside of it. And there's something else it also has. It has a lot of fat in it, too. Ooh. But you know, when we eat some of the fruits that God gave us, it doesn't have any fat in it at all. And it has lots of God's sugar inside of it. And that's really good for us. So God's sugar is good sugar. You bet oh, it is. Good. But when we eat this other stuff, it has a lot of sugar in it, and that's not too not good for us. Not good for us, mm -hmm. no. Now, let's see what else we can find. Let's bring these in closer. Mm -hmm. Here we go. What do you think, Kimberly? What's a favorite of yours here? Oh, <laughs> she likes this one here. These are both made out of potatoes, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They certainly are. But this one here, you can bake it, or you can cut it open and do all sorts of neat things mm -hmm. with it. I have to tell you, potatoes are really good food that God made, but when you eat them like this, they have a lot of fat in them, mm. and that's not very good not at all. Not good, no. Mm -hmm. And also, quite a bit of salt, too. Do you know what I'm noticing, Dr. Neblet? Seems like lots of times you choose foods that are, look natural to me. Isn't like that... just the way God made them that's in the right. first place. That's right. When we eat foods that are like this, the way that God made them, we can hardly go wrong. Mm -hmm. But when you sort of eat them like this, then doesn't do as much good for us. Yeah. Well, let's try one more over here. Okay. What do you think, Kimberly? What's a favorite of yours? I've got two kinds of bread here. Oh, right. she's picked this kind of bread. You notice there's a difference, kids, with this bread? One of them's kind of brown and one's kind of white. Well, the difference is that this one has a lot more grains inside of it. Mm. Things that are good for us to eat, like mm -hmm. oats and barley. It sure is. And these things help us to grow real nice and strong. Mm -hmm. There's hardly anything in this one. As a matter of fact, you can crumple it up into a little ball. There's hardly anything in this one. 
Not very good for us. But this one is packed with grains oh, and minerals. Yes. And this one's a lot better for us oh, to eat. That'd be a good choice. You know, what is really special about all of these foods, if you eat foods that the way God made them, you'll be real healthy mm. and strong, just like Daniel. We want but to be that way. If you eat some of the other foods, you get lots of this stuff. This is the sugar. Mm. You know, if you eat this one over here, you'll get almost six teaspoons of sugar in this one. That's a lot of sugar. And you that know, is a lot. who can eat only one of these? Most people want two or three. You bet. And you eat those, you get almost eight cubes of sugar in this one. Oh, That's a lot that, of sugar. Yes. Uh, not very good for you at all. But when you eat, and that one over there, oh, this one, uh, could you eat more than this cereal? I know we could eat almost two times this I cereal. Think We've so. got a lot of big eaters out mm -hmm. there. And in that one, you're going to get almost four teaspoons of sugar every time every you have a serving. Time. Oh, it's really a oh, lot. That would be hard on our immune system, not wouldn't it? Not very good at all. And not to mention our teeth. You're right. But when you eat some of these that God made, mm. the God sugar, how much sugar do you think is in these? Not any at all. It's just God's kind. It's God's kind of sugar. Mm. Wouldn't that be great to eat food the way that God mm. wanted us to be? Yeah. Yeah. You grow to be strong like Daniel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, Dr. Neblet, do you have anything you could show us how to make with some of God's good kind of food? I certainly do. That would be fun. You know, I think we should go sing a song first, and maybe you can get ready for that, okay? Okay, let's go. Dr. Neblet told us some interesting things, didn't he? What goes into the food I eat? What goes into me? Lettuce green, bushels of beans, and apples fresh off the tree. Lemons yellow and melons mellow, honey from the honey bee. My body machine is running clean on fuel for eternity. I've got to be careful of the food I eat, because it's what's growing me. Whole wheat bread and tomatoes red And potatoes full of vitamin C Carrot sticks and berries you picked Peanut butter and celery My body machine is running clean On fuel for eternity We better hurry if we're going to see what he's making us Well, Dr. Neblet. Is this something that will help my body machine to run well? Absolutely. This is something that I think Daniel and his friends would really enjoy. Ooh, it must be good then. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, kids. We're going to take some bananas. Ooh, yum. Are these bananas frozen? They look a little bit different. They are. That's the secret to them. Get some frozen bananas oh. and some frozen strawberries. Yum, yum. And whatever frozen fruit you like, it really does Anything. work. Experiment, mm -hmm. sure. We've got some blueberries here. And this is just natural fruit that's been frozen, right? Absolutely. And oh. some peaches. Ooh, this looks so good. And then get a juice. Uh, we like pineapple juice. Ooh, yum. And you only need about two cups of uh -huh. pineapple juice. So I'm going to pour some in here. And so this won't have any added sugar in it, will it? No, it won't. It'll just have God's kind of sugar, right? Absolutely. Ooh, that'll and be good. And I think we've got enough in there right now. Doesn't that look Good. And we're going to cover it up carefully, and then we're going to turn it on. Oh, I might plug my ears for this one. Oh, that looks so good. It certainly does. Shall we try a taste test? Oh, I think that'd be fun, don't you? Let's get a taster in here. Sean, come on in here. Oh. And this is all natural, good ingredients that will make Sean's body machine run well, right? That's right. Oh. What do you think, Sean? Yummy. Do you know what's inside of it? Peaches. Peaches, Peaches. that's right. And we put in some other fruit as well, like bananas and, oh, great stuff, including juice. Mm. You can have some at home, too, so try making some, okay? I'd like to taste it, too. Do you think You I certainly can? can. May I taste it, Sean? Thank you. And we'll be right back. Did you know that one of the best ways to become a good friend of Jesus is by spending personal time with Him every day? Well, adults do that by praying and by reading their Bibles. 
But if you can't read, it's kind of hard, isn't it? Or maybe you just like listening to tapes. Well, here's a fun way to have your very own devotions every morning when you get up. Janice has made these morning time devotions for her kids and for you, complete with songs, prayers, and stories. For more information, have your parents write to Morning Time Ministries, Box 208A, Kitwanga, that's K-I-T-W-A-N-G-A, British Columbia, V0J2A0, or call 1-800-263-7671. Here's the number again, 1-800-263-7671. Have you ever thought about where some of the things that you eat come from? A lot of the good things that we eat come from little tiny seeds. Can you see this seed? Do you know what it is? Hmm, maybe you've grown some in your garden. Tomatoes. Do you like tomato sandwiches? I love tomato sandwiches. Imagine this little tiny seed growing up to be a tomato plant and then all the yummy tomatoes we get from it. Seeds are kind of interesting, aren't they? Here's a bigger seed. Do you know what kind of seed this is? Pretty big, isn't it? It also tastes good on a sandwich when it grows into a plant. It grows up to be an avocado tree. And then we get all those luscious avocados from it. Seeds are interesting. You know, I have another seed here that I think probably all of you at one time or another have tasted what grows from it. Can you see it? It's an apple seed. Don't you just love biting into a juicy, crunchy apple? They're so good. You know, and to think that from one little tiny seed like that, an apple tree grows, and each year, an apple tree, a small apple tree, can give up to 150 pounds of luscious apples. And then think of all the apple juice and apple pie and applesauce and all the yummy things that get made from those apples that grew on that apple tree because of that little tiny seed growing. You know, when you think about it, little seeds are kind of like our little choices. I make a little choice and like a little seed, my choices keep on growing. Seed becomes a plant, my choice becomes a habit, my habits keep on going. Dare to be like Daniel, dare to choose the right. Little choices grow and grow to strengthen you for right. Meet me in the story corner, okay? We've talked about everything from lions to apples today. It's been busy, but I've learned a lot. I'm just so glad to be back up in my attic again. Story time is my favorite time of day. Are you ready for one? Okay, here it comes. This is a real good one. Daddy, Daddy, will you give me the northwest corner of the garden? Bertha hollered as she ran into the barn where her dad was working. The what, child? The northwest corner of the garden. It's bounded on the north by the old apple tree, east by the walk, and south by the blackberry bushes, and west by the sweet corn field. Just then, Mother came walking into the barn, and she and Father both chuckled at her precise description of the place. You needn't make fun of me, exclaimed Bertha. I tried to be particular so I could save you the trouble of going to see the spot. Mr. Dickinson turned to his wife and very seriously said, Mother? Bertha wants me to deed her the northwest corner of the garden. Are you ready to sign the papers? Well, said Mother, it's fine with me if she wants that part of the garden. But I'm curious, what do you want it for, Bertha? Are you going to build a dollhouse? I want it for a graveyard, Mother. A graveyard, exclaimed Father. What are you going to bury, dear? Quick as a flash of light, Bertha picked up her father's pipe, which lay on the wooden bench by the door. This first, she said as she raced off. She was so quick that no one saw what she had done. But that evening after supper, when Mr. Dickinson was ready to smoke his pipe, he couldn't find it anywhere. Where is my pipe? Who has seen my pipe? He shouted in not too pleasant tones. I buried it, Daddy, in my new graveyard, answered Bertha sweetly. 
Come and see. You did what? He asked in a shocked voice. I buried it, Daddy, in my new graveyard. Do you want to come and see? He was too shocked to answer, so he just followed Bertha down to the northwest corner of the garden. And there she pointed to a neat little mound. At the head of it was placed a broken piece of shingle with these words very neatly written on it. Here lies my father's pipe. Rest forever. Bertha's father was at a loss for words. He didn't know whether to laugh or to be angry. Finally, he decided to do neither, but to try and get at her meaning in all of this. So, sitting down on an overturned wheelbarrow, he took Bertha on his knees and began to question her. Why did you do this, child? Because I didn't want you to die as Mr. Thurston did. It's a fact, Daddy. I heard Dr. Bell say so when we were coming home from the funeral. Miss Stevens asked him what was wrong with Mr. Thurston. And Dr. Bell said, pipe, Miss Stevens, pipe. He smoked himself to death. So, Daddy, after hearing how bad smoking is for your health, I thought I'd dig a grave and bury the old pipe. You won't dig it up, will you? Mr. Dickinson was quiet for a few minutes. Then he said slowly but firmly, No, Bertha, your father's not a grave robber. I'll miss the old pipe, but I do know that it's not good for my health. It's just been hard for me to quit, but I guess I have no choice but to quit now. That's good, said Bertha with a hug and a kiss. Is that what you wanted this great graveyard for? asked Father, smiling again. Only to bury my old pipe? Oh, no, indeed, answered Bertha. I'm going to bury other things here. I expect I'll have a funeral almost every day. I'm going to bury Joe's cigarettes next and Uncle Ned's cigars and... Well, how will you get them, my dear? asked Daddy. Oh, I'll manage, Daddy. I have ideas, Bertha answered sweetly. Bertha proved to be a busy little undertaker, and by the end of the week, more than a dozen items were buried in her new cemetery. The graves were all made evenly, side by side, exactly the same size, nicely rounded and turfed. At the head of each was a tiny board telling what was buried there and who it used to belong to. These headboards took Bertha a great deal of time and patience to make, but she did her best to print neatly on them. On one was, Joe Tanner's Cigarettes, Lost to View. On the next was, Cyrus Ball's Cigar, burned out. By that fall, the northwest corner lot was finally full. More than 60 neat little graves were there in rows. The apple trees spread a friendly shade over the spot. The blackberries ripened beside them, and many, many a visitor was taken slyly down the garden walk to see Bertha's graveyard. And each person who saw Bertha's unusual graveyard thought that the best part was that every one of those neat little graves represented a man or a woman who had stopped an evil habit. Now those men and women would be healthier and happier because of the courage, faithfulness, and perseverance of a little girl who loved purity and good health. And you know what I'm happy about? I'm so happy that Jesus can give you the courage to make good choices and plant good seeds in your life. You'll be beautiful because of it, too. See you next time. Bye-bye.